welcome to this week's episode of Azentuary. We left off last time standing again in the square of the high market, having just got back, well, from a odd bit of dungeon. Uh, it was, how do we describe this? Uh, a place inside of a thing that Kakano accidentally stole. But nonetheless, here you are, uh, basically where you were before in the high market. Where do you go from here? Home. Mm. I, vou I vouch for home. Uh, how long did this little adventure take us? Was it like instantaneous or was it? Uh, it you, a couple with... hours. Okay. So mm. what time be it then? Because it was like, what, about one or two o'clock? Yeah, so let's call it around like three or four in the afternoon. All right. Well, keep an eye out for any, like, expensive gemstones, and I will consider a uh, theft. I just go back to tinkering on my crossbow. <laughs> All right, you're looking around for kind of perusing. Anyone else uh, doing something similar? I am uh, pretty wounded. I'm looking around for maybe a market with some healing potions or something. Uh, let's see. You look around, and yeah, you do see there's kind of an expensive, what looks like an expensive bottle shop uh, across the way. Yeah, I want to make my way there to the apothecary. Uh, I don't think they're of an apothecary. I think they're more just like, you know, like a fancy liquor store. Okay, that will do. <laughs> <laughs> Kano follows. Chaka Kano is also very hurt. Barely hurt? Very. Well, it's like... Oh, he's very. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. So you go over and you see all sorts of the, like, you know, the fancy long neck bottles that are, like, wrapped in shrunken leather to keep the uh, sun from degrading the things inside. And, you know, you see the big smile of a uh, yeah it's a humanoid face but that no one should be able to smile that wide like uh oh willem defoe in a funhouse mirror <laughs> uh, yeah he's got a smile like jack nicholson's joker okay like welcome uh, welcome looking for something to drink hello there uh I am. I am looking for some kind of potion of uh, all-around healing that can restore my health and my magical abilities. Ooh. Health and magic. Health and magic. Well, let's see here. How serious are you? Um, hmm, well, I have this um, kit, if you're interested in what we call a flight. And he picks up a box that has like six different elixirs in it, each one in about a, you know, two or three ounce little bottle that's corked. Mm. Uh, what does the flight do? Ah, each one has a slightly different effect. Some of these, as he like kind of taps his fingers, it floats over them. Some of these recharge the magical spirit. Others, the mind, and, you know, this one right here particularly revivifies the body. Well, how much would you charge for something like this? Ah, the entire flight for you, a mere five gold pieces. Hmm. Could you, uh, maybe give it a discount if I bought two? Ooh, two, you say? Hmm. Well, yes, I'll tell you what, I'll do two for nine. Okay. Sounds like a deal to me. And I buy one, I buy them both, and I give one to Chaka Kano. Many thanks, Clutchmate. But this one does not know of this magica you speak of. Uh, health is fine. <laughs> Uh, that's okay, Chakakano. We could give some of the extras to the other ones. And uh, I just... I drink... Yes. 
I drink the health one and the magic one right away. All right. Uh, sure. You download those. So the first one, you find that, uh, let's say the health, it gives you quite a kick. Uh, let's say... 4d6 plus 4. Okay. Okay. What about the magic? Then, uh, roll me a 1d4. Okay. Yeah, I got a 1. All right, well, it's... Uh, I was going to do, like, 1d4 plus 1 anyway, so you, two spell slots come back. Okay. And so then I still have, like, three other potions? You do. Uh, they have other effects. And I don't know what they are? Uh, there's little pictures. You could try to interpret them. Yes, I will do that. All right. Uh, give, uh, give me an intelligence check. Okay. I got a 12. Ooh. Uh, you, you look at one, you're like, this one kind of looks like a brain. I bet you that's for something brainy. Okay. What about the other ones? Uh, you look at another one and you're like, hmm, this one looks like muscles. That one, you know, it's like a, like, a picture of like a strong man, like the gold, uh, gold bond powder guy. You know, so you're like, that one must be for muscles. Okay. And, and then, then the you, uh, you kind of, uh, well, I'm up to four, so there's, we'll call it, uh, didn't I say half a dozen? There was a, uh, Anyway. I don't know. I thought you said five, but I don't remember. Probably. All right. Well, let's call it five and make it easier on me. Uh, unless I have to make up. Anyway, uh, there's a picture of like shoes with little wings on them. Okay. Akakano doesn't understand the pictures. All he knows is that one of them is for magic based on watching the partner. So he drinks them all. Okay. Except for the uh, magic one. All right, so the magic one is, I guess, off to the side. Um, do you give it to someone? Or... Oh, there's only there's only one person with us right now, right? Oh, yeah. Do you give it back? I guess yeah. hand it back over to her. Yeah, he doesn't understand how this healing stuff works. Just knows you rest. <laughs> you regenerate. Uh, All right. I like them, Jack. Uh, So I guess roll me um, uh, let's say well first do your 46 plus 4 healing. Got that. 20 healing. All right. Almost back. Um, you, then you uh, let's say um, raise me or roll me a, you're going to roll a bunch of d4s. Roll 2d4. 2d4. Seven. All right, your base int stat goes up by one point for the next seven hours. Uh, roll me another 2d4. Five. All right, your base uh, strength stat goes up by one point for the next five hours. And uh, let's say the last one is roll another 2d4. Six. Six. Okay, so your base, uh, you basically your base speed is doubled for the next six hours. So no real marginal increase in actual functionality for his strength or intelligence, but at least he feels smarter, just like he feels he more dapper with the hat. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, I start and now, making and now my way he's back like he's, it's like he's had like oh. ten coffees, so he's just like buzzing. You just see him kind of lightly shaking, like he's hunt, 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 hunt. Yes, hunt. Hmm. 
I'm just imagining you getting a barrage of images flooding your brain of him wanting to hunt. Oh, Chaka Castle. Um, Slow I... down there, buddy. Anyone else? Anyone else up to anything? I'm kind of perusing, looking around for uh, any expensive looking gemstones. Uh, there's lots of expensive looking gemstones around here. Okay. Yeah, like there's several shops that sell very fine jewelry, you know, gems and gold, all that stuff. Okay. I'm gonna like walk up to like a shop with like a really big, like smooth cut, really nicely looking um, gemstone and ask for the price. All right. Let me actually have a guide for this, make it easy. Bring up the jeweler. All right. Like, oh, are you looking? Let's see. Um. So, what? Is, what is it you were looking at? Like a, a really nice cut, like orb or something? Yeah, but I don't make it seem like I'm desperate. You know, like I look around the other wares first, and I like kind of ponder, hum to myself a little bit, and then I finally like look at the gemstone and say, hmm. Uh, lovely piece you've got here. Uh, how much would you expect it's worth? Ah, this. And he picks up a perfect sphere and starts contact juggling, rolling it around his hands. This exquisite piece has a bit of magic in it. For you, a mere 20 gold. Well, I don't trust that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, but, like, how much do you think it's, like, worth? I told you. I think it is worth 20 gold. Okay, well, um... Thank you, but it's not really, like, the... A little, a little low-scale, don't you think? Like, um, don't you think I deserve something a bit finer than that? So, uh, I'll just be, uh, moving on now. Oh, if you wish. Have you noticed any of the... Exquisite rings I have laid here. Mm. Well, how much are those worth? Ah, well, the simple rings I'll sell for a mere three gold pieces. But if you're looking for something more like one of these custom signets I could make for you, it's a five gold pieces. I won't even charge you for the engraving. Hmm. I, like, look over the reins and then just kind of, like, glance over my shoulder. Eh, I can make it at home. I just waltz out. Awesome. Gago, you as doing walk... anything? Really quick, as, as she waltzes oh, out, uh, she sees a super energetic Chakakano, like, rush over. Very, very, very quickly. Hey, young Clashbeat, young Clashbeat, Chakakano has idea. You you are very good with, with, with tinker and make better things. Yes, yes, we kill better. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Chaka Kano. I also like to speak the slow language. <laughs> the Chaka Chaka understand. Chaka Kano, no speak. Chaka Kano, talk with brain. Yes, very good. We have good brains. Yes, yes, yes. Chaka Kano, have idea. He pulls out his fine great axe that he picked up in the the other realm. Says, and young Clutchmate, make make better for Chaka Kano. Chaka Kano, kill more. Chaka Kano, protect Clutchmate. I like look at the axe and take it in my hands. Kind of turn it over. Well, what kind of thing were you thinking? Shiny, bigger, cut better, more kill, more hunt. More kill, huh? And you don't really care what I do to this as long as it does more kill? More kill, make better, very good. Chaka cannot protect, Chaka cannot kill, Chaka cannot hunt. Alright, sounds good. I'm just gonna like kind of fiddle with it and start <laughs> glancing over my supplies in my pack. Alright. Well, I, you do that. I was curious, Gago, are you up to anything? Uh, nay, nay. All right. Well, then, um, in that case, you're kind of wandering around watching your companions, and you hear a bit of a commotion come from down one of the alleys, and you see uh, a small child just racing full speed down, going right at you, and it slams into you like wrapping its arms around you and spinning around and you're like 
What? What? What's going on? Ah, easy there, lad. Uh, what? What's got you going off in such a rush? You hear the, the a soft voice. Them, them. And you look up and you see there's a group of three, like, you know, adventuring type people. <laughs> I don't know how to describe them. Come running down towards you. It looks like, you know, kind of a a spry little uh, an elf, a um, oh I don't know a dwarf in a cape, and a um, what well, looks like a human fighter all decked out in his armor. They come running in, chasing the boy. Hmm. hmm. And uh, actually, real quick, roll me a perception check. Oh no. Uh, just Gago? Yeah, just Gago. Okay. Um, let's see. That's, that's B7. Okay. My device is uh, not cooperating today. That's all right. Uh, all right. So they're coming at, coming in at you. What do you do? <clears throat> I be thinking... Let's see. And you feel this kid just like, you know, like, oh, God, oh, God, like wrapping around. You hear feel the little arms hitting you, you know, like you know, how the, when the kids run up and they, they slam into you and they panicking and their arms are flailing. Uh, how old is this kid? How big is he? Uh, with a seven perception, I'm going to say uh, you can't tell age right off, but, you know, like the height of an average, say, 10 year old. Hmm. I uh, quickly flip the necromancer's cloak about him and hide him. Okay. And just kind yeah, of you feel, kind of push him behind me. Perfect. You still feel those hands like touching you, like in a panic, like oh god, oh god. All right, and then I just, I just wait. Okay. Well, they come. All right, they come running up to you. Hey, you! Did you see a kid come running through here? Uh, nay. Uh, what you? <coughs> excuse me. What you three strapping lads doing chasing a chasing a kid? They damn kid stole something from us. We're just getting it back. Ah, what did the little blighter steal from you? Not exactly any of your business. We're here oh. on a... We're on a quest. That's all that you need to know. Now, did you see which direction? No, you said you didn't see anything. Ah, All right, guys, fan out. We gotta find this kid. Uh, the other two go, like, wandering off, looking to the side. And the last one eyes you heavily. I need to know if you've seen that kid. He uh, rolls intimidation. See if you resist. Okay. How do I resist intimidation? Uh, charisma check. Charisma saving throw. Oh, all right. Uh, 15. Do you succeed? You kind of yeah. like laugh in his face and you're just like, Okay. Uh, hey. Which one guy was trying to intimidate me? Was it the fighter? Yeah. Ah. He uh, stomps, turns on his heel, and walks off, grumbling, saying something. You can't tell. And then, as he like wanders away, you hear the, this little voice just say, Thank you! And dives out of your cape and goes running basically back the way he came uh, opposite of where the uh, three other guys are looking for him. Do I get any kind of a uh, response? Sure. You mean, yeah, you have a reaction? Yeah, I'd like So would that 
with that. I lost you there for a second. You totally cut out. I heard I like, and then it, nothing. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, I like to try and grab him. Okay, yeah, um, sure. Uh, roll to hit, I guess. So that, or would that be dexterity? Hey, sure, I just was going to do it as an attack roll to grapple. Um, oh, okay, but, well, uh, it wouldn't matter anyway. I rolled a five. Yeah, you miss. Yeah. My dice, my dice have abandoned me yet again. Small uh, and spry. Am I there with them? You were over drinking this. this, this oh. Yeah, this all happened while you were uh, downing your potion. Oh, doing the potion. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to have like multiple things all happening at once because you guys oh, are kind of gotcha. spread out. Fair. Well, I want to start making my way over to the group. All right. Oh, is there any food vendors around? Uh, like you smell food on the wind, but not immediately here. This area is like, you know, more of a, you know, the fancy jewels and stuff. Like the rich people don't want a food vendor here in their square. All right. Well, I'm on the lookout for a piece of bread, like a baker. After uh, it, okay. Start bread stores. I'm sure that, you know, if you started, what if you, you've you passed some along the way. Right. I mean, I'm sure you could find someone. I'm Wouldn't sure be that it. difficult. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, let's say Baker. Uh, let's say you can smell some food like fresh baked bread or something kind of like that coming from the west okay well i, I want to rejoin the group first okay sure uh yeah you walk over and they're standing there well i mean gago's standing there i'm assuming takano's basically running around in circles and hen is over eyeing jewels or i know hen wandered off oh. dr yes. kano's been just like hovering around right now yeah, I'm like I'm hovering around him, watching kind of nervously. Scanning. I'm feeling to act some more, and I'm kind of scanning the stalls for, uh, let's say, scraps, springs, and gunpowder. We are not going to find that here. Ah, shoot. Well, I need to go to some grungy uh, black markets where I can get my hands on some gunpowder. Mm, let's make your own. Uh, the... Uh, people that had been uh, speaking with Gago come walking past eyeing him and they begin to walk back the way they came. They look very mm, grumpy I should say. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I just thought I'd wrap that up. So they're going that way and then... It, as they leave, you see a cart coming in. There's several, I don't know, rather, I guess you could say, people that they don't look like hard workers, but they look like they've been out working in a field. You know, they look like nobles or something that have been working in a field, and they're pushing a cart in, and they look just weathered and beat and exhausted. Hmm. Ah, a gaggle of losers. But despite their appearance upon their arrival, a couple of the shopkeeps leave their stores to go speak with them. Uh, is there uh, anyone around me that I could just ask really quick who those people are? Nah, not if you're with the group kind of in the middle. Oh, okay. I, I try uh, to go sir, just close enough that I can maybe pick up what the conversation is. Sure. Uh, you you kind of tread over and you listen and you hear one of the guys just exhausted. I don't know who they were. Whole group came in, led by some beast and ran us out of there. We were able to get these few things out but I know it's down there. I know that that crowning jewel is there somewhere. The legends are true. We've seen all these other parts. We know it's there somewhere. Hmm. Ooh, eh? 
I just uh, kind of like I cover my mouth and like move my, you know, my send my voice off. And I say, what well, down where? <laughs> oh, who said that? Oh, it's, you know, uh, out at the dig site. Uh, do you have I need I need one of those healing potions, please. Uh, man, I hurt. You see him kind of wander over, aided by one of the local keeps to go over and get one of the healing drinks that you had picked up earlier. Hmm. Oh, uh, that reminds me. Gago, here, I got this for you. And then I uh, pass him the magic healing potion. And I tell ah, him thanks, it, there, Lassie. Yeah, it heals up your magic abilities by two. So, yeah. Perfect. Uh, I drink that down. Uh, roll a 1d4. Uh, 1d4, coming on up. Uh, two. Sweet. It actually replenishes three spell slots for you. Nice. All right, well, I'm going to assume that that brings my third level spell slots all up to snuff then. Nice. Uh, maybe we should ask around for this uh, dig site where it is. I agree, I agree, I agree. Uh, I... Also, I'm looking for gunpowder. <laughs> yes, I, I kind of sidle on up to the nobles and say, Ah, uh, would ye noble people maybe wanting some help from an adventuring group such as ourselves? Oh, well, what, what could you do? Uh, well, I don't know. What all manner of monsters did you guys run into? Oh, some, some kind of weird, like, snake looking people came in uh, they led a whole group they basically pushed us out well uh, I think we could probably uh, we got some shopping to finish up here but after that uh, we could probably uh, give you fine gentle people a hand uh, whereabouts is this dig site Oh, just due north. Just follow the road out. It'll take you straight there. All right. Yes, we are on the job. Just as soon as we restock our supplies. Oh, oh, okay, cool. Um, I think there's... One of us has, like, a rough sketch of the place, if, if you want it. I, I, yes. Okay, uh, let me, let me dig around. I, it's here somewhere. And he hands you kind of a, a tattered, like, you know, parchment that's got some pieces missing, but it otherwise is pretty, you know, intact, showing the main entrance area, at least, of the, um, Kind of the dig site. Hmm. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, yes, we will keep you updated on our progress. Whereabouts may we find you after we are done clearing things out? Oh, we'll be here resting best we can. In the high market? Yes, I have a tent right over there. Okay. Well, I mean, it's not mine. It's my... My brother's tent, but, you know, family uh, lets me stay with them. Got it. Sounds brilliant. Okay. Uh, and I weep you off, and then I kind of go and hand the map to Yora, and, and then let us be off and finish our shopping. Go for it. Yes. All right. What are you looking for? Well, uh, apparently Yora wants bread, so I think we shall follow our noses to see if we can find some bread. And then we need to find a 
a uh, tinkerer's market of some sort, some sort of industrial metal gunpowder, all the stuff to make all sorts of fun weapons. Okay, that's quite a lot. I mean, you're going to have to go on quite the trek to get all that. Yeah, we can split up. I'll take, like, if someone wants to go with Yora, I'll just go off on my own and find the stuff I need. Oh, that's okay. I'll I'll go with you, Hen, and I'm sure that we'll find some baker along the way trying to hawk a piece of bread. Dr. Kano's not leaving uh, Hun behind until he gets his axe back. So he's just kind of hovering around, dancing from foot to foot. All right, well, then lead on, Hen, and I guess we shall all follow you. Really quick, uh, Kakano, do you remember what the stats of that axe was? Uh, standard fine great axe, so plus one. It's like uh, 1d10 plus one. Uh, I think so. no, uh, two handed should be like 1d12 plus one. 1d12 plus one, there you go. Okay. If it's wielded two handed, yeah, cool. I could not remember, thank you. Just a pretty standard, well made great axe. Yes, yes, anyway. All right, so your plan is you want to go try and find basically foundry tools. Uh, you know, gunpowder. Uh, what else did you need there, Hen? Gunpowder and scrap, really. The rest, yeah, can... that's okay. So, um, are you just gonna go searching? You want to talk to people? How do you want to try and make this happen? Yes, you be the leader of the expedition now, there, Hen. Um, I'll ask around if the uh, people have seen anybody covered in like soot, ash, you know, typical tinkerer type appearance. Uh, give me a quick one d twenty roll. I want to see how lucky you get. That is an eighteen. Oh, you, yeah, you find someone who immediately is like, well, I mean, the best place to go would be the, you know, Foundry District. It's on the far side of the Brick District, uh, basically due west from here. All right. That way, then. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a trek, uh, but, you know, pretty much uh, follow your feet and you'll make it soon enough. Mm. Is that oh. the direction that we we're smelling the bread? Yeah, that oh, was, actually. Awesome. How tall is uh, Hen? And how tall are you? 5'3". Pretty short. Right. Dr. Kano just picks her up and puts on his shoulders and starts running towards the district. I mean, hey, this is pretty fun. <laughs> I'm going to start, like, oh cheering and whooping, like, as we fly by people. Well, I did a quick calculation, and with the potion of speed that he's quaffed, plus then if he does dash all the time, he moves at roughly 26 miles per hour. So, should be able to make the ground pretty rel relatively quickly. Yes, you make it, you're like the flash over there. Alright, so if you're... Oh god... Roll me a 1d20. I want to see how if you trip or something. Ten. Uh, it's not great. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Well, he, he is proficient in athletics, so... Yeah, you're I mean... fine. I rolled twice, and I both my rolls were... I rolled a three and a five, so you're, you're fine. You make it. Uh, you... Maybe some stumbles, but nothing disastrous. Yeah, you you successfully make it, and uh, you are like, here you go, and set her down, and then, what, do you run back for the others or something? I guess. <laughs> Just do, like, a little fairy service. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to. I just thought it would be hilarious to have you just, like, Zipping back and forth, you like zip, 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 zip. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll do that. Only, uh, instead of you know of... an hour walk, it's like minutes in between. 
Chaka Khan would take take me last and uh, drop me off at the bread place, please. On the way. How about how about uh, roll me a you're roll me a sleight of hand. Okay. Oh, five. Okay, yeah, you have to you you try to grab some bread on the way and it doesn't work, so you have to be like Kakano stop. And you have to like get off and actually pick up a loaf. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I buy a loaf. How much how much is it for the loaf? Like a copper piece. It's it's really bad. it's not the greatest. That's fine. I put it in my purse. <laughs> All right. I'm just gonna start like sniffing around for gunpowder. <laughs> that distinct sweet scent. Uh, you do start sniffing around, and all right, hold on. I got a bunch of stuff I gotta look at here. Um, you like sniff, 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 and you you look over, and you see a a woman clad in leather pounding away and you see little sparks flying off of her anvil with each strike uh the fire under her uh, like where she's smelting appears to be something other than like coal or charcoal there's there's a weird like popping that's coming from it the the fire is just raging mm-hmm Hello, ma'am. I see you're uh, busy at work. Love to see it. Uh, I'm trying to work on this axe for my buddy myself. Um, you wouldn't happen to have any gunpowder you'd be willing to sell me, would you? She's like... What? Gunpowder? And she turns and looks at you, and... You're at you're just shocked by her because she's, she, you know, while from a distance was swinging around and moving, you see she is just exceptionally beautiful with auburn hair, brown eyes, and little pointed ears. And she's like, hmm, gunpowder. I've never heard of some a substance called that. Hmm. Well, um, gorgeous woman. Uh, what are you using to make your fire, uh, roar like that oh it's a little blend i make using some you know uh, a bit of sulfur from the devils some uh fertilizer from around the corner and um just some good old coal that i scraped up well yeah that'll that'll do it um how much of that do you happen to like have slash make slash um would you be willing to sell it to me oh yeah i had i have quite a bit i mean i make barrels at a time uh i mean i don't like to sell in my, my i mean I, this takes me a lot of time it's it, it's very special to me um i mean i guess i could trade i just no one's ever asked before well i am uh very interested in your genius concoction and i would really appreciate it um well you said trade uh what would you like what kind of thing would you take for it uh, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, that is a really beautiful axe. I, I mean, I wouldn't mind working on something like that. Now, see, unfortunately, this is kind of the thing I need that substance for, so that would kind of negate the whole thing. Um, oh. Here, you know what? I'm going to, like, reach behind my back and pull out my quarterstaff. Um, this is something I've been tinkering with. Um, it's quite exquisite. Uh, would you maybe, perhaps, uh, looking at this? Uh, it, it, it's a staff. What What's so special about it? Well, you see, um, it, it, it can be used for damage. Um, it's also a great, um, arcane enhancer. If you happen to use any sort of magical means... Um, this quarter staff will help you with all your problems. Like, I promise you, you will never have a problem with finding magical components ever again if you have this quarter staff. And I mean, look at the design, look at the craftsmanship. I mean, I worked on this with my own very hands while I was in gladiator training. It's a whole thing. Don't worry about it. But 
it, this mm-hmm. it's just this core stuff means a lot to me and I think you could really appreciate uh, someone as beautiful as you would definitely appreciate the beautiful mastery and work on this quarter staff. Uh, roll persuasion. Oh, uh, twelve. Let's see. Yeah, she rolled a nine. So she's like, oh, you know, actually, yes, that, that does sound quite nice. I'll tell you what. Here, I'll, let me fill a pouch for you. She takes off a, a small leather pouch and fills it up with her powder. Hmm. How about instead of that, would you be willing to write down your recipe for what you make? I'll tell you what. I don't like giving away my recipe, but I will tell you uh, the, well, I've told you the components that are in it. Oh, yes, might as well. Here you go. And she on the, the inside of the pouch, like writes down the proportions for you. Oh, thank you. You beautiful, genius, lovely woman. Uh, I will definitely like thank you from the bottom of my heart this really helps with my studies oh absolutely and um you know i was kind of giving that to you hoping that you could uh maybe do something for me in exchange well i mean i did give you my quarter staff but what did you have in mind well i um was hoping you could tell me about that rather fetching dwarf in your party. I feel like a shot of pain go through my heart. <laughs> yeah, th- th- that's uh, that's Yora. Um, she's really something, isn't she? Um, she, you know, she's a druid. She's very attuned with nature. Um, you know, like I've seen her like do many amazing, incredible things. Um, would you like me to like? Set you up with like her contact info, like maybe her like clan name. Uh, yes, that 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 would be quite nice. I'm, I'm sorry, you're you're very sweet, but I'm just something about beards. You know what? Totally fair. I understand. I'll be your wingman. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate it so much. I appreciate you. And I'll kind of. Walk, stagger back to your own. Uh, Lass, since you're here, do you want to ask her if she has any, like, scrap iron she's willing to part with? Since she hurts too much, man. Oh. <laughs> also, she's been incredibly stingy. <laughs> Took my quarter staff, now she wants me to be her wing man, all for just a little tiny pouch of this stuff, and I guess the recipe to make it, but I still gotta buy that stuff. Anyways, I'm just gonna, like, walk over to Yora and just, like, grab her on the shoulder and be like, Hey, you into, like, auburn-haired, beautiful women? Uh, she is, is rather beautiful, but I'm actually not interested in women. Uh, thank you, though. Cool. <laughs> um, do you want me to give her, like, a fake number or something she can reach you at? Like, a fake apartment? <laughs> fake side uh... of town? <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Just... Yeah, tell her yeah. I live over in the Brick District or something. Perfect. I go back to her and I'm like, okay, so she's interested. Um, she usually, ha- like, she lives in the Brick District, so she's usually out and about taking morning walks, you know, like the nature goddess that she is. So if you ever, like, pop on over there in the morning, you can probably catch her. But, like, she's not looking for anything serious right now, but, like, you play your cards right, maybe. Maybe you'll get something. A little bite, you know? Perfect. I mean, I'm always down for a fair relationship. Yeah. The the people I would murder for you, I like murder under my breath. <laughs> and then I and I walk off and I'm like find my grocery list of other ingredients to grab, and I'm also gonna go look around for like what coal, like. I mean, I think she gave you a little bit of gunpowder in the past. A little bit, yeah, but like. While we're here, I might as well stock up on stuff. 
God, and I didn't even think about it soon enough. I should have said she's in the market for a fair relationship. Ah, oh, God dang it. Um, <laughs> what a wasted sorry. opportunity. Sorry. I know. I missed it. What? what uh, was it on your on your list there, Hen? Maybe I could go and convince her to hand over a little more. You can, but I don't want her to feel like we're using her too bad. I mean, we're already going to ghost her, so... <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, you do, right. you, you have free will. <laughs> what do you have there? What is on the list? Uh, let's see. We got coal dust. Um, already forgot what was all so on that list. and saltpeter. That's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to go over there to the to the lady, the the fair lady. There are other people around. Okay. All right, let's go. Let's go look around first. I don't want to yep. take advantage of I'm someone. I'm looking for a little bit of extra <laughs> scrap. So. Mm -hmm. All right, so you go. Walk, you walk away, and uh, yeah, there's lots of pounding, banging, you know, things going on, and uh, you eventually, um, you know, you see a guy that's his place is just filled with every little bit of scrap that you can imagine. I mean, it is ridiculous. There's piles of all different types of metal all over the place. Well, seems promising. Hey, uh, you selling any of this? I'm gonna, like, gesture what? around. I don't, I, I don't sell this. I make stuff. Make, make stuff. So what you see is a, a grumpy looking kind of heavy set man, uh, taller than a dwarf would be, more like elf height, but definitely dwarf features. He's got a narrow face with curly brown hair and dark eyes. He's wearing his leathers and he's got some strange rings on his finger that he's using. You see they glow with each strike of his hammer as he's working the metal. What do you want hey. my metal for? Do you want me to make you something with it? Uh, no, actually. Uh, I'm very similar to you. I also like to tinker with things, make things, um, make things better. You know. Um, I'm just looking for a little bit of extra metal to use for said uh, tinkering. Ah, uh, metal, metal. Fine. Give me a silver piece. Take as much as you can carry. This is all junk anyway. Deal. <laughs> I will give him a silver piece. I was going to flip it to him, but I will, like, hand it to him. You know, I'm very grateful. <laughs> he flips it up in the air and then pulls open his shirt pocket and it falls inside. Ah, see, that's a great party trick. Uh, you're grab as much as you can. <laughs> I'm going to start, like, <laughs> shoveling things into my arms. <laughs> yeah, I'll scoop up as much as I can hold. Awesome. So you guys grab a bunch of scrap metal. All right. What else did you need? Um, the ingredients on the list: uh, sulfur, saltpeter, coal. Just a little bit oh, extra well, so I can make some on the road. I mean, you can find that stuff just around here. You know, there's people making their concoctions and so forth. It'll be pretty easy. Uh, we don't have to role play that all out. You can just, okay, you cool, know. Yeah couple copper pieces here and there and you got it perfect so yora now has her bread and hen has her duff yeah all right where do we want to like meet for the night <laughs> that's i need a place to hunker down and do some work <laughs> hmm? i've got ideas brewing in my head and they need to go down now <laughs> Uh, let's see. You roll me a perception check. I, I say we could we could always go back to that cute redhead's forge and and uh, you know see if she'll share the forge. I'm for done the with night. that saucy vixen. <laughs> <laughs> the perception check was a nineteen. Nice. Uh, you look around and you see there's a tent. 
that just has one old dude sitting at it that he looks like he's basically exhausted and sitting down for the evening. Okay. Hmm. So... And it's only like afternoon. So he's like done super early. Okay. Let's go talk to him. <laughs> okay. Let's go talk to him. Okay. Uh, excuse me, fine sir. Might you know Whoa. a nearby inn where we could find some privacy and rest? Uh, you're just looking to rest? Uh, the hell, lay down here somewhere. No one will mess with you. All right, sounds good. You guys do whatever you want. I'm gonna like find like a little back corner and start uh, tinkering. <laughs> uh, you look uh, well uh, before Hen can wander off there. I, I talked to the old man. Uh, look rather tired there, sir. Uh, what you been doing all day? Oh, not a lot. I'm just old. I wear out soon. You know, anyone's welcome to come by and you know use my anvil furnace. I don't really care. Be nice to see someone actually putting it to use instead of it just sitting here. Dang young kids can't keep up with them. Ah, well, thank you, sir. Uh, yes, I think we shall avail ourselves of your your forge and your tools for a bit. Excellent, excellent. Uh, don't burn the tent down. <laughs> and here, uh, for your kindness, I, I hand him like five silver pieces. Oh, thanks. Uh, I'd rather just uh, be able to sit and talk with someone a while. Uh, you, big guy who's twitchy. Uh, <laughs> you uh, got an ear for an old man? This one has multiple. Mm -mm. Uh, Chakakano actually pulls an ear out of his pack and hands it to him. You get a good old old man. Oh, 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 I like you. Hey, actually, I was going to lay down. Walk with me, my bug friend. Okay. Do you do you walk with him? Yeah. Okay. He just keeps dancing. Starts for telling. Foot. All right. As you do, he's just talking constantly, telling you like old war stories and stuff. Even teach, he even t talks about other other ways to hunt that like different species have used. Oh, truly a great hunter. Akakano is enthralled. Perfect. So you wander off and do that. All right. Um, jump back to uh, Hen. How is your tinkering coming? Well, thankfully, I've got tool expertise, which means my proficiency bonus is doubled when I'm using the ability checks of tools. <laughs> Nice. Well, let's give it a roll and see how you do with Kakano's axe. Ooh, okay. So, it's going to be uh, 26. You are very successful. So, uh, yeah, you turn it into a absolute working wonder of the world. Um, like, Perfect. it's... If you had done any better, it would get the fine weapon bonus. But I'd say if you would like, how about this? If you had rolled over 30 or 30 or over, I'd give you the fine weapon bonus on top of everything else. But as is, uh, let's go with, you know, what you have created. The, I, what is this? no longer fine. Chaka Kano's Go Kaboom Axe. Yes, sir. <laughs> Do you want to read the description? Oh, sure. My beautiful masterpiece. <clears throat> so it only really gains a plus one, uh, or, okay, plus two uh, attack bonus and damage bonus uh, when used normally. However, um, the secret is in the extra chamber that has been added into the center of the battle axe. Um, when hitting a trigger... One of four chamber doors will open and unleash gunpowder onto a creature during attack. This can be used as a bonus action. Um, a second bonus action can be used to hit a different button on the handle of the axe. 
which causes coarse gears to grind and a spark to ignite any nearby gunpowder within three feet. Um, with this gunpowder ignited, the resulting explosion has a 15-foot radius centered on the gunpowder, and if the explosion hits more gunpowder, that gunpowder also goes off and does its own damage and its own 15 radius range. Um, this will also deal damage to the wielder, but, you know, gunpowder is testy. <laughs> So uh, any creatures within range work? can make a deck saving throw or to take half damage. Otherwise, they will take full damage and be blinded for one turn. Um, they will take 46 fire damage. This axe has four charges and uh, will only reset if actively refilled with gunpowder. So if you have resistance and you make a save, that means a quarter damage? Yes, basically. <laughs> Because it's half of whatever the halved thing is. Um. <laughs> and you round down every time. Additionally, as well, obviously gunpowder is gunpowder. It can also be ignited by other fiery means. Yes. And, and depending on the environment, there may also be additional check rolls I'll have you throw in there just to see how well it works. Anyway, this looks like a wonderful thing there, lass. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Um, how much time has elapsed? Oh, you guys have been at this for... Let me roll a thing here. Uh, um, ah, helps if I don't drop my die. Wow. Uh, so in total, uh, your travel over, everything you've done, and the weapon making, it's been six hours. Dang. Uh, so it's be middle of the night then. Uh, well, what did we say when we started? It was like two or three, so it's like. You said late afternoon when we got to. I did the say boundary. late afternoon. Yeah. All right, so, so let's so uh, five, six. Yeah, so it's like eleven at night. How about that? Yeah. Hmm. Perfect. I lay me head down to sleep. <laughs> me okay. too. Well, uh, the guy who you have, uh, who has been talking to Kikano, welcomes you to share in his uh, bedroll. Oh, how kind. Thank you. And I sleepily move over there. Awesome. He's just happy to have a friend. All right. Well, that's awesome. So we wake up all nice and refreshed in the morning. Yep. So, okay, so you guys are doing a, you're doing a full night long rest? Yeah. I believe so. And as well. All right. So we are moving on then to day three of the market. Let's say you are waking up early. Uh, let's call it dawn. So it's maybe, what, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., something like that? Sounds good. Yeah. And it's I'm time to head here. Oh. What was okay. that called? Wait, say that again, Gago. I said it's time to head north. Oh. Ah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I okay, uh, I want to talk to the old man before before we leave. Uh, I said. I okay. ask him, uh, sir, have you heard anything about orcs and uh, treasure or uh, artifacts in the area? Oh, artifacts. Yeah, they're pulling all sorts of stuff out of the ground over there. Where do you think all that pile that uh, old what's-his-face over there has in front of his place? He didn't, he didn't make all of that metal. They've been yanking it out of the ground. Oh, thank you very much. And I say, it sounds yep. like we're headed in the right direction. 
Well, I just and you, what was it you asked something about orcs? Yeah, they they've been harassing people, saying some ancient right thing that they've got. So, yeah, watch out for them. Well, don't let's like be orcs. <laughs> Me either. Okay, so you guys are, you're leaving here. Let me bring up my town map real quick, so I make sure I don't get lost. All right, so you said you're going to the north from here? Well, to the dig site. Ah, which so you're going to have to cross? Right? Well, it was north from where you were. You have now moved to a totally different district in the market. Which was west, right? Yeah, you are very far to the west. Yeah, so we'll need to go northeast then. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, you can uh, make your way uh, northeast. Um, as you do that, you find yourself uh, first in an area where you see lots of exchange of what looks like like basically raw ore be uh, like chunks of gold that have just been pulled out of the ground being like piled and weighed and measured and people being given you know coins and there's a lot of trade going on like all over this area that you stumbled into hmm Interesting. Uh, is there like a central mine or anything like that? Uh, you can see that this is all stuff that's like being brought in from somewhere. There's, you know, carts coming in, being, uh, there's like horses pulling wagons and they're unloading the uh, ores and powders directly into this area. Huh. There's people there running anyone... like there's, you can see. Hmm. Oh, is there anyone standing off to the side? Oh, of course. There's always stand someone standing off to the side. I go to talk to them. Yes. Can I help you? Uh, hello. Uh, where is all this stuff coming from? A lot of activity in this area. Ah. This... We call it the gold market, but it's not particularly always gold. It's whatever we need for our mixes. Hmm. Mixes? You see her turn and look at you and her eye, green eyes flash. Alchemy, my dear. Very interesting. Where you do you also... get it all from? Oh, oh go ahead. Yeah. Oh, not my... I don't really care. It comes here and I purchase it. And as she, you know, throws her hand up to, like, do the not really care motion, you notice that she is wearing some very fine silk gloves and dark dyed expensive undershirt mm. so magical items then is that true i can do some magics yes but i'm more of a a mixer of concoctions to achieve certain desired effects mm. Hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Of course, of course. And are you looking to buy or are you just passing through? Oh, always interested in buying if the price is right. What do you have? Oh, I find it better to ask what you need than what I have. But you see, I can have many things. You could say I have 
infinite but limited abilities. Hmm. Excuse me, that well, seems contradictory. <laughs> do you have maybe a potion that could bring back the dead? Bring back the dead. Well, I mean, technically, I could reanimate a body that is no longer functioning. Yes. What about a certain object that is lost to the hell regions? Could you Ooh. perhaps summon it? Oh, I'm not a summoner. You'd have to find someone to summon whatever you're looking for. I could recreate an object for you. Perhaps something that burns you in a good way. Mm. This is more an old companion that I knew long ago. It's a small uh. doll, you see. It, uh... Oh. Yeah, Almost I'm not like into little... that kinky stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you sure have some now limited talents. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told you I have nearly infinite abilities, but they are limited. <laughs> this is very vague. I don't know what you could do for me anymore. I'll do it myself. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, I say, well, perhaps we should ask one of the workers where they're getting this stuff from. It couldn't hurt. Uh, so, Sorry. yeah, I make my way up to somebody who's dumping some metal, I guess. Okay. Uh, yeah, you see, uh, you know, a sh short, stout guy um, make a dump, and he's got yeah. jet black hair and large amber eyes. Like, time to go Whoa. to work all night. Move the ore around. <laughs> go to work. Work all night. Ah, oh, what? Hello. Uh, give, I'll, I'd give you a silver piece for a moment of your time, sir. Yeah, silver. Hmm. Don't really get much of that around here. Yeah, yeah. sir. Sure. Sure. Uh, where are you getting all this uh, metal from and artifacts and things from? Oh, caravan comes in. See, they, they come here across the desert, drop it off out on the outside of the market. We bring it in in exchange. Ah. Uh, what time does the caravan arrive? Ah, first one. Right now, first light. Just showed up. That's why we're unloading. There's another one oh. scheduled for when the sun hits the mid-sky. And there should be a, the last one of the day, right before sunset. Ah, thank you very much. And I flip him a silver coin. I say, let's move. Let's go to the caravan. Sounds good to me. <laughs> He's like, okay. Uh, one second there, lass. I didn't <laughs> yesterday we told those fine noble gentlemen that we would help them at the dig site that there's this big, huge crown gem. Oh, sorry. I thought the, they were connected. Uh, -huh. I don't know. Maybe we should ask the worker guy before he scurries off. I can donate another silver. Oh, well, that's all right. I shall, uh, I shall be happy to uh, pay the ferryman, so to speak, this time around. Mm -hmm. uh, good sir, this caravan, would that happen to come from the dig site? What? what? Uh, no, no, caravan came from across the desert. Yeah. <laughs> Did you call me a ferryman? <laughs> uh, no, a fake no, creature. no. I'm from this world. What are you doing? It was a figure kind of speech. It was not magical actually... creature. Flicking and flittering and flipping around with my little magic wings. Ah, uh, well, they'd be all right, people. They're not people, though. They're fairies. 
Well, that sounds problematic. <laughs> you ever been oh. to the Fae? They get insulted if you call them people. Oh, so you speak for the Fae now, do you? Then how would you know this, my good sir? I got trapped there once. It was miserable. There was this creature. He was flittery and stupid. He kept talking about pastries, pop tarts. That does sound like hell. Misery incarnate. I, I seem to have heard uh, heard a tale about that uh, fairy a time or two. He sounds pretty legendary to me. Just don't say anything like that around those. You ever you ever been around a fay and say the word legendary? You know what they do? They're like legend. Wait for it. Dairy. So annoying. Well. Sorry to have triggered you, you triggered you there, young man. Uh, I think we shall be on our way. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. I gotta clear my head with some work after that. Mm -mm. Oh, by the way, uh, here's a silver. Why don't you go buy yourself a sweet roll after you're done? Like, oh, okay, sure. Thanks. He seems very confused and wanders off. <laughs> wow, that was illuminating. Should sure. we make our way to the dig? I let us go. It's time for some fun and adventure. I do All like right. how it's you begin canon that Poplart invented the pop tart when he could not get his sweet rolls. <laughs> Many inventions are accidental. So, all right. You guys make your way due east and eventually find the road that heads out to the dig site. Uh, right. At this point, let's say, you know, you kind of wandered through the market. It took you at least, uh, oh, let's say a half hour to get there, plus messing around <laughs> for timing's sake. Let's say it's about uh, 7 a.m. What time do we say we got up? About 6. So if it's about 6, yeah, we'll call it about 7. A crack of dawn. Crack of dawn. All right. So you approach. Yes. What you see from the surface is there's a long, like, the roadway looks like it continues past it in a long, like, continuous line. It goes out into the desert somewhere. That must be, you know, for where caravans use or whatever. But the dig site, there is, as you, you can see, basically two entrances off of this road. You kind of go to the left, and they go down into the ground. They have moved, looks like, a mountain of sand from the desert, and it is piled almost like a, a crater around this area that has been unearthed. There are smaller piles inside, which make up various divisions, and they look unpleasant to try to climb. Uh, like they're being held in place by, you know, uh, supports and bearings that would make them steep and difficult to maneuver. Hmm. Are there All a right. lot of people there? You don't see any activity, like, around on the outside. Okay. And if I bring up the map that we were given before, uh, am I able to kind of see which way the the dig site leads down underneath underground or anything you look in to like the, the entrance area you don't really see anything right there uh, it looks just like kind of an opening uh, from where you're at 
you know, you, you look in and you can kind of look left and right. You mostly see a pile of sand, like, straight ahead of you with the ability to go either, let's call it north or south from there. Hmm. Okay. I show the others the map, even though it doesn't really make sense. Hmm. Well, I'm thinking that we need to go... Is the dig site basically underground? It's no, it's surface, but there's oh, the big piles that make it hard oh, to maneuver. Yeah. So you basically are like inside of an open air maze type of a thing. You know, like they Got piled it. it. You know, like you could climb up over those dividers, but why? Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> looking at the map and where we are can we kind of somewhat figure out where we're standing where we're starting uh from the outside looking in you can't really tell and you can see that there's a couple of ways in but other than that you're not sure exactly you know which way things are laid out from the you know on the inside from the outside all right uh you're i guess uh we just have to Pick an opening and uh, be bold. Oh, all right. Are you feeling northy or southy? Uh, northy, I guess. Me too. Let's do it. This is the same advice we give our young ones when they are coming of age. Fascinating. Your culture also has this. You tell your young young ones, are you feeling northy or southy? No, pick an opening and be bold. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so you go through the... I'm assuming you're entering the north entrance, is what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Excellent. You enter the north entrance. Let me... Uh... You guys have done so much, I need to go back to my initial setup. All right. So you walk down inside and you start to look. And as you enter, you start to see movement. There is slithering across the floor. And before you even have a chance to like turn you see six large snake heads rise and look at you oh uh nope and then uh, let's go we we leave i, I want to leave let's get out of here let's try the south entrance it's a lot all right <laughs> so you like run everyone out yeah <laughs> All right, you guys are you hightail it out of there, and uh, you head down to I guess the southern entrance. Yeah, what's in there? Uh, one sec. I need to find out. Mm -hmm. As soon as I can. All right. You walk inside and you see what looks like, uh, let's say, the upper torso of a woman, but from the waist down, it is a snake. She's wearing what looks like a crown with three golden spikes on it, and she waves at you. Like, oh, welcome. Didn't expect anyone to come in here. <laughs> oh, uh, hi there. Hello. What are you what? doing here? Oh, just exploring, you know, looking around. What is this place? This place is ours. Come join us. 
Oh, I don't know about that. What can you have to offer me? Ah. Uh, oh, I can offer many things. Uh, one sec. Need to look something up real quick. I can, I can offer many things. Take a step inside. How do we know we can trust you? Well, I suppose you can't. But I can tell you if you don't come in further, the things behind you are going to get you. Ah. Uh. There's nothing behind us. You're trying to trick me. Oh, you think so? She slithers a little closer. Perhaps you should look again. Hmm. And as you uh, turn to look, a 20-foot radius sphere of blackness appears, and you hear a cacophony of soft whispers and slurping noises. Oh, no. Well, only way through is in, I guess. What do you guys think? Definitely seems like our best option, although I'm sure none of us are happy about it. I... Can I... I want to cast... I can kind of just projects to the group. Hunt? <laughs> uh, yes, Chuck Kano, I'm assuming that that is what's going to be happening here very shortly. Chuck Kano readies his axe, and you just hear a little whir as the blade starts getting coated. <laughs> oh, gosh. Coated? <laughs> Bonus action. You can prepare it outside of combat. All right, fair enough. All right, so you you doing that, and uh, what does any uh, all right, anyone else? You are you walking in? You're standing there preparing something. Uh, I want to cast no, detect just magic. It, sorry, I heard it. I you're casting. What'd you say? And detect magic. Yeah, detect magic. Okay. Hmm. It's a uh, twenty-two to cast. Oh, geez. That's amazing. Um, all right. You sense the presence of magic from 30 feet. So, yeah, you sense a ton of magic behind you and a bunch of magic in front of you, uh, probably emanating from that caster. Mm. Okay. I tell the others about my magic sensings. Oh, yes, that would make sense. <laughs> right. Uh So I I kind of step forward and I uh say to this creature, uh do you uh, intend us harm? Um no. But you do look rather tasty. Uh, yeah, eating us would be harming us. Well, to each their own. Hmm. Uh, what do you want of us? Well, I suppose nothing. Um, perhaps you could, uh, lay down and die. <laughs> like kind of tells, like, <clears throat> projects out to the party to step back. Make, make space. Okay, uh, I do that. Well, yeah. I can't really step back as you got that spear behind you, but I, uh, I scurry as far to the side as I can. Excitedly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Taka <laughs> Kano Cannonball! 
he charges head first as the party passes between them and straight at the queen lady and takes a swing. Oh, okay. Sure. That is... Oh, with plus two now. Uh, 23 to hit. Uh, yeah, that, that definitely hits. Right, so that is... 14 slashing. Peace. And then he swings again, so if 23 hit, then this one definitely does. It was a natural 18, so yeah. Plus the bonuses. So that's uh, yes. another... Oof. Uh, 16 slashing. Damn. And then he rages. Okay. <laughs> and that deals from the gunpowder that went on to her. Uh, doo -doo. Okay, so she needs to roll a dex save. I don't know what the DC is on it. Uh, well, she's going to succeed because she just rolled an 18. Okay. So she takes... 10 fire damage from that plus 3 from his rage. So that's 13 additional fire damage there. As okay. the fire erupts out. And then I need to do a deck save as well. Oh, Takakano makes it. So that's he takes 5 fire damage. Alright. And she of course screams from this. Uh, Kakakano, I'm going to put you at the top of the initiative and have everyone else roll. Oh, my beautiful creation, it worked. 17. <laughs> uh, I rolled a 3. Hen? Hen? Hen is so excited and full of happiness about this that she rolls, what is that, 20... 21? <laughs> nice. Alright. So, really quick, let me just roll a couple of dice here the, the, it's actually a brilliant little addition in there because every time he rages the fire goes out of him so no need to waste another bonus action on igniting that's true yeah. right. I don't want to make it too overpowered it's my first homebrew so <laughs> yeah that's good um alright so she of course uh, has the first response. So let me see here. I hate when they write up a whole bunch of stuff. I'm imagining the telepathic link says to the party, nobody eats my friends but me. <laughs> <laughs> well, he hasn't tried to eat us yet, I don't think. Of course not. Only if you were to die to honor your your sacrifice. No, you know, that makes sense. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so, Kakano, I need you to make an intelligence saving throw. Ah, uh, his strong suit. Ten. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, ten, you said? <laughs> oh, God. All right. Uh, so you immediately take... Seven psychic damage and become frightened as the manifestation of your greatest nightmare appears before you. A giant fly swatter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Suddenly she morphs into a giant fly swatter and you are terrified. Uh, oh, and do you have any uh, movement left from your last round? I don't know. I mean, he's got a 40 movement speed. So, depending on how far he had to move in. From yes, the group you the moved charge. in, and now... So, basically, this occurs, and you immediately move... You're, you're basically moved back. So, the uh, effect causes you to flee. So, you, fly, you basically run right back to where you started, terrified of the giant fly swatter. And we go to Han. All right. 
do I see this giant fly swatter or? No, I think that's you do shark. not. You only check. Only Kakano sees it. But what you do see is the result of the scream that she let out, which is the sands around her began to almost boil, and uh, the bodies of basically a bunch of like kind of snaky looking women popped up from under the sand. Okay, so now there's like multiple there's a... targets. Yes, they are mm -hmm. around her, the central one. Okay. Well, hmm, let's see. Uh, we're like a bit back, right? Yeah, you guys are at the entrance. Everyone's like back at the entrance and th this group is in the middle. Works for me. I'm gonna fire at one of the snaky ladies that just popped up with my um, crossbow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, that's not as good as I've been rolling. That's only an 11. You fire at her and she like just kind of barely dodges to the side as it skids by. Well, that's my action. <laughs> Alright. Yora? Um, uh, is Chakakano still terrified and cowering? Oh, yes. Yes, he's next to you. Uh, I cast a uh, greater restoration on Chakakano, which removes, uh, one effect, uh, like semi serious effect, including charms, certification, and then. Charms, petrification, curses. I don't know if being frightened. Now, frightened mm -hmm. is a, so greater restoration is like, uh, let's say someone's bitten and is turning into a were rat or something, then you can restore the disease off them. Oh, but okay. Just being frightened. I mean, you can just give them a smack and it'll break being frightened. Would that count uh, as a bonus give... action? <laughs> well, you no, know, you don't give him a smack. You have to smack the creature that caused the frightening because it's a All magical effect and break their concentration. Oh, okay. okay. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, well, I want to cast uh, actually um, entangle around the creatures, which is a 20 foot cube. Oh, nice. All right. I like so, this. Uh, let's see. That's a 22 to cast. Ooh, that's very successful. All right, so weeds and vines sprout from the sand and wrap around the feet of the various women. And let's see, they must all succeed a strength saving throw or be restrained. All right. Is, is that on all of us? No, just the, uh, um, the snake people. I guess they're not that close. No, they're not. You guys are down uh, below. Uh, advantage of creature attack rolls are disadvantage. Okay, so I need to roll a bunch of saves really quick. Let's see how I do. Should be fun. Good move, by the way. Ooh, two failures. Ooh. Uh, hold on. I need to make notes really quick. <laughs> I don't want to forget as I go along. Uh, failure save. Ooh, nat 20 success. That's a hell of a save. Hmm. And a failure. Okay. So let's see. Uh, the, the, the spell is just on success. It frees itself. Uh, all right. So the, the ones that have succeeded are free, but the ones that failed are basically, um, unable to move and you guys have advantage, uh, against them for an attack and they have disadvantage for if they try to attack. All right. Sounds good. Well, cool. cool. All right. What you see is this group. Uh, the ones that failed their saves are going to be fighting and trying to get out, but the ones that have succeeded are going to draw their bows and begin firing arrows at you. 
Uh, just need to find... There it is. Okay. They all have short bows. Um, let's see. Who are we shooting at? Probably not Kakano. Let's see. Probably Hen and Yora. They're the two primary ones. So the first one shoots at... Let's see. Let's do... Let's say Hen first. That is a... Uh, 19 to hit. That does, in fact, hit. All right. Let's say this end. Okay, so the next one will as well. So I'm just going to get two out of the way at once. Actually, let's do a third just to see. Yep, they all hit. Oh, and there goes my d20. Oh, jeez. I'll have to find that later. Oh, oh good. I hope, it's, I hope it's gone forever. I found it. Um, <laughs> all right, so that is 1d6 piercing damage. One, so five, nine, twelve. Alright, so in total, uh, three of them shoot at you. You take a total of 15 piercing damage. Five, six, seven. And they are poison tipped arrows. And snake eyes. All right. 13 poison damage. So 15 regular damage and then 13 poison damage on top of that? Yep. Uh, then shoot. there's a couple of failure ones, and then the other two are going to shoot at Yora. And Yora does a 16 hit. Uh, yeah, it matches my AC. So it misses. All right. You actually dodged out of the way. And those ones are there, so Gago, we go to you. Uh, I shall cast Fireball. Alrighty. I'm setting it so that, you know, the 20-foot sphere covers them, but does not actually hit us. Got it. Go for it. Uh, yes, that is a successful thing. That is a 23 to cast. Whew, very successful. You blast that fireball out there, so I gotta do some uh, saving throws, right? I Dexterity. Dexterity saves? Alright. Uh, what's, the, what's the number I gotta get over? Uh, 14. Alright. First one saves. Um... The next ones do not. Uh, it's 33 fire damage. All right. Hold on. Let me uh, let me see who does what really quick. Gotta... Man, I'm having a lot of failures. That's good. Not for me, you didn't. <laughs> well, no, I didn't on that, but... Failure, failure, failure. All right. So you said how much fire damage? 33? 33. Good lord. All right. Yeah. Well, um, you severely burn basically all of them. Uh, they are looking quite bad. Oh, my good lord. All right. And, oh, I got to do a concentration check on the one. And she nat ones. So Kakano Yay! is no longer uh, afraid. afraid. Excellent. Taking 33 fire damage. We'll do that to somebody. I mean, right yep. now she's taking like 70 some in total. <laughs> uh, 59, but go ahead. Oh, it's your turn. Okay, well, rough yeah. math. Oh, so Kakano's free. Kakano is still angry. Now that he realizes that snake woman tricked him, charges back into attack. But as he charges, uh, I guess since we're still still far enough away, recoat the blade with gunpowder as the bonus action. And okay. swing, but it's the first attack is only sixteen to hit. Uh, that still hits. Oh. Yeah. 
me, so that would be... 12 slashing, and I can't ignite it, though. Right. And then if 16 hit, this one will as well. That's a 19 to hit. So 12 plus... Oh. That's a 20 slashing damage on the second one. Good lord. Well, that kills it. Oh, but her, bot her corpse is still coated in gunpowder. Someone ignite True. it. <laughs> All right, so the gunpowder covered corpse is laying on the ground in the middle of this group. Uh, we was go that, to Hen. Was that the queen one? Yeah, that was the yeah. yes. Nice. I'm assuming that I'll have been watching Chaka Kano because he's using my beloved creation. So I'll notice the gunpowder and I'll kind of give like a verbal look out, I suppose, and uh, cast Firebolt. All right. That is an 18 to cast slash hit. No, oh, you hit. At a right. at a dead target, it should be a hit. <laughs> you have <laughs> yeah. advantage. <laughs> that should it's be with moving. advantage. Yeah, and that's just just for funsies. The fire damage on that is uh, ten. Ten fire damage. All right. Yes, you have desecrated the corpse. All right, and it explodes. Oh, well, that is oh, what Chaka Kano saves. So Chaka Kano took two damage. Okay. A foot radius That's a 15 foot radius. So it might actually hit some of the other. That's kind of what it's I was going, going to. For. <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez. How much damage does that do? Can you roll for it real quick? Yeah. Ooh. Uh, 18. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, so basically, it explodes, and there is one left. I like how Chaka Khan's just standing there in the middle of the fireball. Looking <laughs> yeah. At the, looking at the I last think. one, angrily. But it's yours turn. Uh, okay. I wonder if... I can like aggressively cyclically link with something and send out barbecue. <laughs> uh, I scream with all my savage might and I run and I hit the last one with my shillelagh. Okay. Uh, 22 to hit. Oh, that very much hits. Okay, and we got a uh, uh, five bludgeoning damage. Uh, still, I mean, you whack it, and it's like bloody faced and looking around and terrified. And uh, wait, it still has is that entangles still on it, isn't it? Oh yeah, I guess I should have done like advantage. You don't need advantage. Oh, okay. Um, it's freed itself, though. So it technically, because it doesn't say that the area becomes uh, rough terrain. So it's going to try and run. So you could take a reaction to try to hit it as it's running away. Yeah, I throw my shillelagh at it as it's running. All right, roll the hit. Okay. Uh, another 22 to hit. Holy crap! <laughs> yeah, you hit it. Okay. And that's nine, nine bludgeoning damage. And you kill it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> As it's running away. Well, I'd say that was rather successful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are they, they aren't wearing anything, or are they? They're snake people? Yeah, so they they had, you know, small like daggers and stuff, but you can see that the the humanoid form was not native. They were kind of holding it so they kind of fall back into being more or less 
serpenty. Is the queen one still wearing the crown? It's you see that it wasn't actually a crown, but more of part an outgrowth of her head. It's part of her body. Well, what's left of the body? Yeah. Yeah. So if it okay. was a real crown, it would be like totally fused to like charred flesh, but it's oh, just part of seen... body. Have you guys ever watched Torchwood? I know Ben, you have. No. Yes. Nope. Ah, hmm. never mind. I was thinking, remember the scene with the suicide bomber that wouldn't die? Oh, God, yes. Yeah, that's the queen. <laughs> I don't like the sounds of that. <laughs> it's season four. It's uh, called Miracle Day. Basically, no one on the earth can die. And this, no one knows it yet. But this guy who's a suicide bomber blows himself up. And he's just like... Flat as a pancake, exploded on a table, but still technically alive. Oh, that'd be horrible. Yeah, oh. it was awful. And hey, that's what Queen me. looked like. Wait, what? What? I just said that's what I just said. That's what the Queen looks like after having her body oh. coated in explosive and then ignited. <laughs> yes, she's very much toast. Anyway, what were you going to say? Yeah, what were you going to say, uh, Gago? I was going to investigate the body and see if those little points on her head are actual gold or not. No, no, that's what we were just talking about. They're just outgrowths of her body. Well, yes. Like, that maybe she no, they're just gold. No, she they're does not gold. excrete gold. Okay, and they're just gold colored. Got it. Yes. Uh, does she have fangs? Technically, yes. They're like really small, like human teeth, though. Yeah, but yeah. you know, slightly larger, like like vampire fangs, I guess. Oh, okay, interesting. Is there anything different about the room now? Do we still hear all that freaky stuff from the from the entrance? Oh no, that that dissipated. What you does can go the back room look now. like? It's no yeah. longer blocked. Uh, it's not a room so much as kind of a flattened area surrounded by, you know, sand. Um, <laughs> there's piles of it all over the place. Uh, basically, you're in kind of a cavernous area. The entrance is, you know, say to the east. There's You can move to the due north or the northeast or northwest diagonally from here. Um, but the area to the south of you is totally blocked off. Okay. Uh, well, should we continue in the I... northward direction? Sure. Okay. Becca kind of picks up a chunk of the queen's tail and starts munching on it. Barbecue and snake. Mm -hmm. Hi, Takakana. How's that axe treating you? Mm, very good. This one is very happy. Young Clutchmate is genius. Ah, I wouldn't say that. Maybe we can uh, figure out an instrument so that you don't get hurt as well. <laughs> Takakana believes that it is worthy sacrifice. Alright. As long as you're happy, I suppose. I would check this one would prefer not to uh, possibly die, but you know, it is what is. That's a good way of thinking about Chakakano. <laughs> we all die, but we do not all truly live. That is a very profound thought there, Chakakano. <laughs> hmm. Only one truly brave of heart would think of such a thing. Is Chaka Kano the smart one of our group? <laughs> <laughs> he, the most, uh, he does have significantly more than wisdom than intelligence. So, I mean, that's not saying much. <laughs> well, like, compared, compared he to knows our last... Good... <laughs> He's Sorry. at least the one of the best part in our group, I think. <laughs> 
Just because yeah, you anyway, compared to, to the last Forge dragon. Say so the last group of characters we played. Uh, everyone in this uh, group is a genius. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I actually just double looked at it. Yeah, Takakano has a plus one to wisdom. He is actually wiser than the average human. Yeah, it must be because of his great life experience. He's <laughs> he's pretty old for his race. This mm -hmm. is true. We do forget these things. All right. So we head on north. All right. Uh, due north or northwest? Uh, due north, I, th I thought. Yeah. Okay. You make your way due north, and, you know, there's a rather large dune immediately next to you. It kind of narrows out. Like, there's a kind of a bottleneck in the area. And... Oh. As you approach, you can see somewhat into the room ahead of you. Uh, have everyone roll me a perception check. Oh, goody. Ken gets a 12. Uh, 16. Oh, somehow Chaka Kano net 20. Oh, oh, very nice. Because I got to 7. All right, so... Kano, leading the group and walking through this area, suddenly stops and tells everyone, if we go here, we will be hunted. Hmm. Well, we should not go there. Well, unless Chaka Kano wants to actually do the hunting himself. So, Kakana, what you're sensing is there is something, like, that is on a hunt and is lying in wait to hunt you. We, mm. we may hunt in return. Yes. Hmm. We could maybe send a decoy to uh, trick the beast. Yeah, what kind of decoy would that consist of? <laughs> I could go. I am the smallest. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Wait, stop, don't. <laughs> no, don't do it. You have so much to live for. Uh, you are, hold on up there for a minute. I, I could cast uh, Thunder Wave uh, ahead of us and see if the loud noise brings the wee beastie out of hiding. I like that idea better. Okay. Um, so I will uh, cast Thunderwave as far away from us as I can. So the room is cavernous and long east to west. You can see some narrow areas to the northeast that allow you to, that you could go out of. There's also an opening due west of the, you know, to the far western side of the room. Um, it's large, so if you're throwing it, say, to the far wall, you know, that's going to be across a significant span, something like a hundred feet or so. Okay. Well, uh, Gago's figuring that out. I'm going to pull out my, um, jug, jug of alchemy and write something on the label. Okay. All right, well, it doesn't say what my ranges it just says it's a 15 foot cube so okay it says the boom is pushed out to 300 feet so i guess i'll just isn't it centered on self oh yeah it is so if you cast it there you're gonna hit all your companions oh well then i guess uh why don't you guys move back about 17 feet okay <laughs> What a specific number. <laughs> All right. Uh, after they've moved back, I shall cast this spell. And see if we can dislodge anything. All right. Oh, God. Well, I think I wasn't really aiming or anything. Um, 
I need your dice, Ben. Uh, that'd be an eight to cast. Uh, I, I mean, think that's okay because if I remember, you just have to not fail. Yeah, right. I think you're right. Yeah, let me open it up real quick. Yep, a wave of thunder sweeps out from you. Da, 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 da. Yep, it's the other creatures that have to make constitution saving throws. All right, the, so, uh, can I say this? All right, so this creates a ripple, and you see it propagate out through the room. You don't directly hit anything, but that wave, that thunderous force that sweeps across the room pushes the loose dust and debris, and you see maybe, let's say, ten forms, like small humanoid shapes, like, you know, tiny creatures uh, get outlined in the dust, and then as the dust blows back in, as the wave passes, they disappear again. Tiny. Was not expecting tiny. Hmm. That is concerning, actually. I feel like that's much more disturbing. <laughs> and I think this is the perfect uh, visual to stop and pick up on next time. Dun, dun, All right. dun. I just have to remember fairy fire. I finally got to actually be an yeah. artificer. <laughs> well, you made a heck of a weapon. Could be better, but... Yeah. You're going to have to... Uh, at our next uh, stop, make yourself like a powder horn. Somebody get oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that won't take... Well, that was kind of... It's nice. Yeah kind of what I was thinking with the little leather box, but yeah. Oh yeah, I guess I probably should just give all the gunpowder I made to Dr. Donna now, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so you might as well. Oh, uh, maybe considering the fact that he's highly volatile, that not necessarily the best idea. <laughs> well, that's a good point. <laughs> that's... Is when he rages, he might just set off all the gunpowder. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Figured explosions. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's like of... you know, I made all this gunpowder. I'm just gonna keep it above my raging fireplace for safekeeping. <laughs> what do you mean? Isn't that the best spot to put it? Because like that's where all the fire-related things go on. Yeah. So you just give him a whole barrel of gunpowder and see what happens. Yeah, I'm just trying to I'm imagine sure like, how... putting that on his back. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how quite a few of the people in the gunpowder plot were caught. You know, in England. Uh, not Guy Fox. He was hiding away in the basement. But his co-conspirators, they tried holding off the army, the king's army, and but their gunpowder was wet, so they spread it out on the floor in front of the fireplace to dry it out, and a mm -hmm. spark ignited it. <laughs> that's that's smart. Oh no. Well, like old gunpowder wasn't. Uh, granulated for a long long time so like the old gunpowder wagons that would roll through at a uh -huh. pretty high probability of going boom because they just have this cloud of explosive dust around them at all times mm-hmm oh okay mm -hmm. also why china started outlawing fireworks for all the fun festivals they got tired of truck drivers you know chucking cigarettes out through uh, truck window and then it getting blown back in the back. <laughs> yeah, That's fun. a lot of people used to die every year from that. Lovely. Hilarious, but I mean, yeah. Ill deaths. Well, it's like the Australian Transportation Board song, Dumb Ways to Die. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Be safe around trains. A message from Metro. One of the best campaigns ever, though. After they released that song, uh, railroad deaths actually went down substantially. I mean, there you go. Yeah. Wow. They're like, I can't be like put into an article like labeled "dumb ways to die." Like, I gotta change that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Okay, well that was fun. So... This has been an Azentuary LLC production. Find us online at A-Z-E-N-T-U-A-R-Y dot com for character bios, merchandise, Patreon, and more. Thank you for listening.